All right. It's been a while since I've made one of these. Uh, it's almost midnight or 3 a.m. my original time, but I just landed here in Seattle. And of course, Blackmagic decides to come out with a nice little update that seems a little controversial. So of course, I'm here to talk about it. Actually, it's been a little bit since I've talked about Blackmagic updates. Uh, let's see, I missed the 20.1 update from last month, which was a pretty cool release. It added uh, DaVinci Resolve immersive workflow into uh, Resolve public release, which was really cool. So Vision Pro owners can rejoice and start playing around with that footage. And speaking of awesome updates, I actually have some awesome DaVinci Resolve updates coming to my DaVinci Resolve course and iPhone filmmaking guide. And since I just crossed over 100,000, uh, they're on special pricing deal on my website. So if you're interested in any of that, Check it out in the link in the description. But today we're talking about what Blackmagic literally just tweeted, which was the fact that you can now rent a DaVinci Resolve studio license. And I think most of you will agree that that is very interesting wording or marketing. And most of the comments on this tweet probably align with what a lot of you are saying. You know, please don't become like Adobe. Don't turn this into Adobe. Don't you dare replace the single purchase method with this. And just people asking a lot of questions of like, is this truly just another option? Or is this a peek into the future of what Blackmagic's plan is for DaVinci Resolve? And everyone has praised Blackmagic for being one of the few companies that doesn't seem to price gouge its customers, both in the hardware and the software departments. They've always been, I mean, I mean the Ursa Cine 12K, which just got like a $6,000 decrease in price for their $15,000 combo you can now get for like 10,000. So they're always finding ways to help the end user save a couple bucks. And so if we look at this from the optimistic point of view, um, what they're describing this as is, and I quote, this makes it easy to bring in extra help on smaller projects by renting a license for a short time available now basically what you can do is with your free black magic uh, account you log in and now if you go to the uh, bill managing like whatever subscription because you've been able to have like project libraries cloud storage space you pay for that stuff and now if you go into those plan settings you'll see an option for renting a library or I'm sorry, now you'll see an option for renting a studio license. And it looks like you can rent it for 30 bucks a month. Now, yes, if you took away the single one-time purchasing option, then you'd end up paying about 360 a year. Obviously, that's more than $300 one time for many years. And this is the route that we've seen companies like, of course, Adobe is notorious for being... You know, one it's just one of those software tech companies that knows the hold that they have on its users. And so they've just increased the subscription cost of their software over the years. Now, one thing I remember from the NAB update that uh, Grant gave with all the new product releases from this past NAB, um, when he was talking about DaVinci Resolve 20, he threw in, I think, a little throwaway line to him, but it definitely caught everyone's attention and kind of made us all go, wait, wait was, what was that? He was talking about up to this point, they've not been charging for any updates to Resolve. You know, I got my first Resolve license nearly a decade ago, and I can still use that code to install and use DaVinci Resolve 20 with no issues. And he hinted at the possibility that in the future, uh, it may cost something to update. Now that was pointing more towards a update purchasing option. Maybe you, if you're a previous user, you pay 99 bucks to upgrade it or whatever. But now a lot of people seem to be worried that they will slowly over time go into the subscription model space. I could see uh, them going either way with this. And as someone who, like anyone else, doesn't love the fact of another subscription price, if we're looking at $30, even with Adobe's thing, which I've complained about Adobe for years, but with them, I more have the issue of 
they charge a lot for software that for me in my experience just keeps crashing keeps having issues a lot of the newer features just seem more flashy and gimmicky than actually useful on a daily basis and so for me that just kind of creates a weird disconnect but DaVinci Resolve, again, in my personal opinion and experience, they've been innovating at such a fast level, creating features that both, you know, amateur content creators and professional true filmmakers uh, would use on a nearly daily basis. If worst case scenario happens, they end up going full subscription model, 30 bucks a month is a steal. If that means that they continue on the path uh, that they've been on for releasing new features and updates and all that. I'm not saying I want that to happen, but I'm just saying that if that's the worst case scenario, like I'm okay with that. But again, as of current, all we can go by for what is considered news and not just, you know, any of our opinions, they are trying to create this uh, for the setup in which say, you know, I'm a solo creator. I have a, obviously a studio license but as someone trying to get into more narrative filmmaking, let's say I have a bigger project where I have a bit of a budget to bring in assistant editors, maybe a couple of remote editors here and there. They don't have their own studio licenses. Maybe they're Final Cut users, Premiere users. And I'm like, no, I need Resolve for this. Um, then I could essentially pay for them to get a studio license by going into my plan, adding one or two seats, and if I only need them for a month, then I can pay 60 bucks to get two extra uh, editors with a studio license versus having to like spend 600 to get two separate licenses. So to me, it seems like a pretty niche feature as of currently. I don't think this is anything to sound the alarms for and go crazy. But it is an interesting little feature, and it makes me at least think that the conversations are happening at Blackmagic of what they're going to do. Clearly, they've been pouring tons and tons and tons of resources into Resolve over the past handful of years. But yeah, as always, I would love to hear what you guys think about all this. Do you think it's just kind of a minor little news, cool little extra option to get Resolve Studio in hand? Um, or do you think this is the beginning of a bigger play moving to a more full-time subscription model? So let me know in the comments below. And uh, yeah, if you enjoy Blackmagic News, make sure you get subscribed. See you guys in the next video.